Everything in the universe is either a body of matter or packets of energy. Matter emits energy from itself and energy changes the shape of matter. Different shape of matter emits different shape of energy and the cycle goes on. This is how physics summarizes the universe for us. Matter is mostly described as particles which they literally makes up everything in our universe. These particles release different types of energy and forces from themselves, creating the great flowing system of the universe. As we know, the universe is made of 12 particles of matter and 4 forces of nature, which they are illustrated in a standard model called the fundamental particles table. How did we even create this table? And what does these numbers mean in the description of the particles? Well, we'll talk about it now. In order to understand this subject, we must talk a little bit about history. The first people in the history who understood the idea of a universe made out of smaller things were the Greek philosophers. Around 2500 years ago, early Greek philosophers pondered the fundamental nature of matter. One of these thinkers was Democritus, who proposed the concept of atoms. He believes that all matter was composed of small, indivisible particles called atomos, a term derived from the Greek word of indivisible. He believed these atoms have finite shape of existence, and they have the ability to join together and differ in shape and size. Interestingly, the Greek philosophers believed in atoms only as a philosophical concept, and they didn't perform any experiments on their ideas. It wasn't until 1911 when the two men called Rutherford and Hans Geiger discovered the atomic nucleus together. Rutherford later in the 1919 discovered the protons by himself and believed that electrons, which they were earlier discovered by J.J. Thompson in 1899, orbit around the atomic nucleus. Obviously, atoms are not the smallest objects in the universe. So, years after these scientists, many of smaller particles were discovered which they were making up the whole infrastructure of the atoms. Because of that, we named them the fundamental particles. All the particles in the universe are represented in this table. The table is divided into two sections, bosons and fermions. What are the main differences between the fermions and bosons? Well, before we start, all these particles have spin, charge, and mass. The first difference is, bosons represent the main four forces of the universe. Electromagnetism and photon, strong nuclear force and gluon, weak nuclear force and boson W and boson Z. Wait, that's three. What about gravity? Well, some scientists theorize the existence of a particle called the graviton. Unlike the idea of general relativity, which believed gravity is just the curvature of space-time, quantum mechanics believes that graviton is a particle that forms temporarily to attract objects into each other. It has the same philosophy of the attraction that occurs from the smaller mass to the bigger mass, but the bridge of attraction is not space-time. Rather, it's the particles that exist between these two objects, which they are called graviton. But until the day the scientists proved the existence of graviton, we'll define the bosons as the force representative particles. On the other hand, fermions represent mostly the particles that are ruled by these forces. Fermions are 12 particles that are divided into two groups of quarks and leptons. The second difference is spin of particle. Boson particle spin is 1 which simply means the particle needs to spin one time to return into its first position. It might be bizarre to understand, but fermion particle spin is always divided by half, which means beside the one spin that the particle had, another half spin is needed in order to return to its first position. In this video, you can see how this man is representing the half spin. The idea of the spin in the particles 
doesn't specifically mean a physical planet-like rotation. Rather, it's an interesting angular momentum carried by elementary particles. This quantized property plays a crucial role in quantum physics, distinguishing particles and influencing their behavior beside the charge and mass. Speaking of charge, the third difference can be referred to a case called the supersymmetry principle. According to this principle, two particles, mostly fermions, cannot exist having the same quantum state. These two pairs of particles are connected, but at least one of them should have different charges or a negative spin. The difference is this principle does not apply for the bosons, and it only applies for the fermions. Two boson particles can exist with the same quantum state, but it is impossible for two fermions to exist in the space having the same quantum state. The most massive particle in the fermions is the bottom quark with 4180 mega electrovolts times the speed of light squared. And the least massive particle is the electroneutrino particle with a mass of 0.000002 mega electrovolts. Out of all these fermions, the most common particles in the universe are the electrons, up quark, and down quark. According to Professor Brian Cox, only these three particles are needed to form our cosmos. Up quark and down quark are the particles that, by connecting them together using the gluon particle, they will form the protons and neutrons. Worth for noting another particle in the bosons that is called the Higgs boson. Higgs boson particle was predicted by Peter Higgs using special equations in the 60s. Later in 2011, Using the Large Hydron Collider, the particle existence was experimentally proven and it didn't last one thousand of a second in the experiment. The Higgs boson is often referred to as the God particle, and the reason behind the name is because it interacts with other particles, granting them mass, making it fundamental to our understanding of the subatomic world. Basically, the existence of the mass in the universe is thanks to the Higgs particle. No matter how complex the universe can get, a beautiful simplicity can be summarized in these particles that makes up everything in our world. Who knows, maybe in the future this table will be expanded and many other of our questions will be answered. But until that day, do not stop wondering and be curious.